What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden, at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? Transgender trucker from TikTok is on soft white underbelly. So this is the same uh, transgender trucker that had that meltdown on TikTok. Yo, what's going on? This is why black and brown drivers quit period in trucking and they want us to quit trust me because it's redneck it's racist and no more wasting time let's get it now hold on you've been driving a truck for how long now okay let's see i've been driving a truck for about like literally it's gonna be three years within about like three months you'll drive all over the country yeah that will have you going coast to coast and like i said that's very dangerous like the dynamics of trucking is like very it's set up for where all the companies make money for themselves, and it's like a pimping industry because they only give the drivers a little bit. Like, you should get a percentage and in charge of the driver load board, picking your own loads. So you can go ahead and see where you want to drive and pre-plan yourself. Instead, they have a... Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Now, I do agree with you that the industry is like the pimping game, but it's, it depends on which company that you get with. And it's, it's it depends on the mentality if they let if if you let them pimp you out. The driver manager is called a dispatcher. Barely knows anything about the fucking business, and literally, they go home, <laughs> don't care about you, mess the load up. They can have you picking up a load. It's called like a repower. You just nope. It's not a repower. A repower. Let me break it down to you. A repower is when another truck driver comes up to you and takes the load that you're already on. It's not a repower. That's not called a repower. Let's get it right. Uh, <coughs> it's messed up that this young man really, really feels this way about trucking. Again, like I said, this is the same. This is the same one that had that powerful meltdown on TikTok. Let's go pick up a load. That's late delivery and they never reschedule anything. So, you But he is right about one thing about some of the dispatchers not caring about their drivers. Again, that goes back to the company that you drive for, too. Because if you drive for a company that really don't care about the drivers, then, yeah, you're going to get those type of dispatchers that just, well, forget about them. And we're just going to go home and I, I still get to go home. I don't care about them if they make it home or not. You might get to the place, and mind you, tight ass roads or back roads, dangerous as shit. They'll give you the wrong address. Now you got to figure out where to go. And they won't pick up, and night dispatch is the worst because if you call them, half of the time they don't care and they don't know because they don't correspond. It's not about corresponding. Night dispatch isn't there for the dispatch. Basically, they're there for... Uh, emergency purposes, say like you break down or something like that. That's what they're there for. If you need a a, a tracking number or or you got it, you 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 get to the the delivery and you your fleet manager or dispatcher isn't there and say like they gave you the wrong number or something like that. They will be the ones to you know make the call to see if they can get a hold of somebody that can get a number or something like that. Night dispatch, yeah, they are, they are a non ugh, ex communicana, but you know, it's like communication is very shot within trucking, and that's why drivers have quit after a while because like zero experience. You're from one side of the country, like the Midwest, and you want me to drive all the way, like to Seattle, Portland. It's not about zero experience, though, bro. It's not. I mean. That's not the re well, that's not the reason why some truck drivers quit this industry. A lot of you guys, let me let me break it down for you now. A lot of you guys get influenced by these TikTok truckers that's telling you get your CDL and come out here and get the bag and it's gonna be easy. Nah, see, that's the problem. Y'all think this shit is easy. Y'all think y'all gonna get in here, do whatever y'all want to do, and then come to find out it's not all that great. That's why y'all quit. Going up the Cascades and people have never seen it in the wintertime, they get scared. And they don't know how to like 
deal with it with the anxiety, all that. And they put a lot in front of you and they really don't care. Like, it's just they want to say you have to have experience going up and down mountains and driving over TR, which is over the road. And that's a lie because you can get hired and do local, but they don't tell you nothing. They want you to come in as a company driver, which is like slave for peanuts for them. Ooh, slave for peanuts, man. This, whoa, this disgruntled driver, man. <laughs> woo. You, you, you got done bad, real bad from the company. Who, who you drove for? Swift? Two years experience want to give you 48 cents per mile or something like that close to it when you should be getting 55 cents per mile or 60. I agree. I agree with you. I mean, you know, I do agree that truckers should be making a little bit more than what we be making out here. You know what I'm saying? We, we are considered the essential drivers, but now we are afterthoughts, you know? We're afterthoughts now, you know? We, they just want somebody in the seat. Here, we're going to give you 40 cents a mile, be happy with that, and you're done. Especially if you don't have the experience. If you're coming out of, if you're coming out of trucking school and you don't have the experience, of course, bro, they're going to treat you just any kind of way and give you any kind of thing. Especially, again, if you like go through a trucking company sponsored school, Swift, you know, they know that you're going to have to pay them back after you get their CDL. So by them offering you like 40 cent a mile and tagging the 12 month contract on top of that, they're going to look at you like, yeah, bro, we got you. We got you. You have to do this because you have nowhere else to go. You owe us, which is not true, by the way. And then some of them don't put APUs in the truck, which those are outlets to where you can plug in stuff that you need. Mm -hmm. And that is like kills everything. And then they have an idle mm -hmm. policy on some of these companies where mm -hmm. they only want you idling in the truck for a little bit. And that's right. all the shit. And like, what am I they want to save money. Am I going to do burn up in a truck? It's like crazy. And they don't clean these trucks neither. That's another thing like, mm -hmm. I have a problem with. They put you in a truck that got bed bugs. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That's that's the one that he that he went on a tangent about that he got a truck that he was assigned to and he, it was all bed bug ridden, bruh. Why you even went out with that truck, man? I would, nah, nah. That's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. You don't when you get in the truck and you 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 inspect the truck, inspecting the bed area to make sure that it's clean because this is where you're gonna be. This is going to be your sanctuary. So when you get in here, you're going to want to make sure that there's no pet hairs, bed bugs, uh, kernel corns in the, uh, in, in, the, in corners and stuff like that. You want your truck to be really, really detailed. Now, I agree. Some of these trucking companies do disrespect us by giving us these bum-ass trucks. But still, it's up, to, it's up to you, the driver, to be like, yo, I'm not going to be in this truck. Well, no, you have to. No, no, no. If I have to, I'm about to go. I'm about to bounce. I've been through that four times in 2021. Four times? Damn it, man. I drove from Rancho Cucamonga all the way to San Antonio, getting bit the fuck up when Texas had that winter storm. I think it was 2020. I was just trying to haul my ass back home. Um, you shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place, bro. Get to San Antonio. That's where I was living at the time. It was chaotic. I'm like, they don't give you a personal convenience, which. Personal conveyance uh, differs from company to company, right? Now, some companies don't even don't even have it set on your uh, on your Sam Sarah, while other companies do. But you only get uh, a certain amount of time on conveyance. So make sure when you get with a company. Make sure that is one of the questions that you ask. That's a button if all your drive time is out because you got 70 hours to drive, period, for the week. No, you don't have 70 hours of drive. You have, you have 11 hours a day to drive. You, you have your eight-hour clock before your 30-minute break, your 30-minute mandatory break, and you got 14 hours of on-duty time which all consists up to the 70 hours that you have total. It's that, that is not drive time. 14 hours. You can't push the limits of. Oh, no, they will. They'll try to violate. But here's the, I'm, I'm going to get into that next. 
you got 11 hours to drive straight. And they really feel like you should just sit in the fucking seat all day and take no breaks. That's a good point. Good. This is about the best thing that you said on this, on this interview all day, bro. This is the best thing that you said. You have a good point because the 11 hours belongs to the company and they do inspect you to drive this bad boy all the way out. Guys, go and check out Soft White Underbelly. Um, this truck driver name is Melanie, a uh, former truck driver. I say former because this is the reason why they got out of the industry. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> okay, my guy. <laughs> Woo! So you jumped out of trucking. You you jumped out of trucking because of your mental aspect and everything. And I, I get that because trucking is not for everybody. But just to jump out of trucking making about I don't know, making about eight, nine hundred dollars a week to going back to New York to transition to be ending up in the halfway house. Drivers, let me know what your thoughts about this in the comments below. Big cheese got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real way, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make a sound. And I want you to miss me when I'm not around. Come dive in my ocean, take for my push. My love is like lotion. It's all over you. You all over me, cause you my little boo. How many times I gotta tell you, don't fuck around. Cause they got you insecure, you your feelings now. Don't start with all that crazy shit.